Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So in this video I'm going to see if I can figure out what's wrong with this uh, lithium polymer battery. It's a 6 cell battery at uh, 5.2 amp hours but for some reason one of the cells have uh, failed and possibly another one also but at least one is completely dead. So I'm going to do something that you shouldn't do because it's not safe in any way I'm going to open it up and see if we can uh, see if there's any faults inside. If we can see any reason why it it should have gone bad. So let's take a look at this battery that failed here. Um, it's been a couple of days and it's been sitting in a container and uh, nothing happened. It's even not as uh, swelled anymore as it was. But that uh, doesn't mean it come good or it is safe or anything, of course. Uh, and I'll still keep it away from anything that can burn, of course, uh, when I'm not watching it. So if we go ahead and measure the voltages here. You can see the first cell is 3.73. Next one, 3.44, or 3.744, 3 3.733, and then this is basically 0 volts, there's like 40 microvolts, and then the last one, that actually went up to 2.77 volts but when the battery failed it had dropped to 1.8. I'm still not sure what the reason is because it was balanced before I started using it. I don't know if this cell failing had anything to do with the other one being low uh, because when the battery failed it swelled up and it was really bulging out on this side here. I do have a bucket that I can kick this into and a door right behind me I can uh, open up and uh, throw it out if uh, something should happen and also a fire extinguisher of course well I don't expect anything to happen but you never know so uh, it's a good thing to have those things in place So there's no obvious signs of what have gone wrong here. It's uh, the second cell here that's completely dead and uh, even though the insulating tape doesn't cover this part it doesn't really look like it could have come into contact with this in any way. But uh, down here though you can see the insulating tape doesn't cover that one and it's very close to the other cell there. And I don't know if it shows up on camera, but there's actually some leftover solder or something in the foam pad between the two, so there's very little distance between them. But again, that's not what caused the problem, because uh, then it would have been these two cells, and it's not. I do have some spare caps on tape, so I'll just go and uh, pull this off. And you really shouldn't cut with a knife near a lithium polymer battery because uh, 
lithium and oxygen don't mix, so if you accidentally poke a hole into it, uh, it could very well catch fire. So. Okay, so I think I may have started to build up a theory here. If we measure the batteries, the second one here is completely dead short. Yeah, it would help if you could see the multimeter actually. You have seen it before though, but if we measure this, you can see it's it's basically a dead short. That's the second battery. The one on top here is the one that measures 1.8, or it measured 1.8 volts, now it measures 3 volts, almost. But take a look at this, you can see it's very concave here, you might be able to see that on the camera, and also on the top side, so it goes like this, the entire battery. So my idea is that the second battery here has uh, shorted out somehow, and it got extremely hot and heated up the pack and it started to swell. Then that have uh, bent this entire cell here, which have uh, in turn either made it fail or uh, short out temporarily or something like that. <coughs> As to what exactly of course the short I don't know because the the wiring here was fine it uh, it can't have been that so it must have been something internally uh, to the cell itself I think this bend that you see here have been a lot worse than this because when the pack started to fail it was uh, really bolting out like almost like a half circle on the top and after it cooled down it kind of contracted itself a little bit. So I could in theory run the project that I'm working on on five cells but uh, I don't feel like just removing this and then using it because I think this one is dead also. I think these four might probably be okay because it kind of only had a chance to push this single cell but well, then again, you probably shouldn't use these either, just to be safe. But I don't think they, they are actually bad. And if we dig a little bit deeper, this is the second cell, and this is the third one here. You can see that looks like new. Nothing wrong there. Uh, I can't open it very much because uh, I'm afraid that it will short on the other side here. We, we can't have that. Actually, I just cut the next uh, layer of tape here to get the next cell loose. And the third one here, the side that have been against the bad cell, is actually slightly raised. I don't know if you can see that at all. It's not very much, but it is. And it, uh, I can feel this, like there's some, uh, something happening to it. The other batteries are completely firm, and also this one on the back, but not against the bad battery here. It's a little bit uh, almost like this air in between the plastic and the, the sill. I guess that could make sense, uh, considering this have been uh, very, very hot. Um, yeah. But apart from that, uh, nothing much exciting to see in here. So I'll go and tape this battery up again and uh, put some captain tape across this so it's uh, as safe as it has always been and then I'll put it in that container and put it out in the garage. It can't set fire to anything. If I get the time, I might go and uh, take uh, the cells apart and uh, do an uh, individual test on each of them and see actually if if this one and the third one have uh, still got some capacity. Uh, this one is completely dead, so that won't make any sense. And I'm sure at least the last three here, they should be they should be fine.
So that should be as safe as it have always been. And that's meaning not safe. But uh, So we didn't figure out exactly what went wrong with it, but at least now I have a pretty good idea. And again, I don't recommend anybody to go and take these apart. You do that 100% on your own risk. It can very easily catch fire if you do something wrong. And you can uh, hurt yourself and or others, so uh, be very careful about that. I didn't take this apart entirely because I think it's fun. I did it to find out what the fault was. And I wanted to find out if it was a quality issue or something like that, but I think everything looks fine with the connections and the cells themselves, and uh, I don't really think this could have been caught anywhere. Um, so, yeah, still. But anyway, if you liked the video, please give it the thumbs up as always, and thanks for watching.